recording. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Arash's World. Today we have a special guest, uh, Rainer Greenberg. Hello. Welcome to Arash's World. Hi, Arash. It's great to be here. Thank you. Great. So if you can just briefly introduce yourself, I have you as, as an author and health and wellness speaker, but anything else you'd like to share? And uh, also, we're going to reveal the topic here in a few moments as you are probably presenting yourself. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, I've been in health and wellness for about 30 years now. It does started with my own journey of um, losing my health at a very young age, completely unexpected, uh, but very frightening. And I know many people go through that at various points in their life. So I became a seeker seeking health, mental, physical, and emotional health. And along the way, I found so many wonderful uh, discoveries and in terms of health and in terms of balancing um, the, the, the physiology, the body, but also the mind, the emotions. And I created a wellness program that was then reviewed and sponsored in over 75 hospitals. Uh, it's been an amazing journey. Over a hundred major corporations, including Disney and Home Depot have had me on site to help their employees with the wellness program that I created. So I've had the privilege of helping hundreds of thousands of people and uh, I know you want to introduce the topic, but the last few years, um, well, you go ahead and then we can kind of get into how I got into what we're going to talk about today. Great. So health and wellness is something I'm, I'm myself fascinated about as well. And um, it's, uh, I, I, I love it when people overcome certain issues that they have and setbacks and then use it to not only to look for knowledge, but also to gain wisdom and share it with others. Yeah. And that's, that's something I've gone through. So when, when people suffer such a uh, horrible setback or setbacks in their lives, I love it when people show resilience, bounce back, and then do so much good that way. So suffering in that sense, it is a horrible thing, but it can be used towards good in, in many ways. Exactly. It can be such a blessing of transformation. But it doesn't feel that way when you're going through that. So that is something yeah. to keep in mind when for people who are suffering. And yeah, so uh, the main topic here, and uh, one of the, the main topics here is, is CBD. It's yeah. something that I've been uh, very curious about, and uh, the best person to ask is you. So yeah, let's get started on our topic. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, I mean, I never thought that my health and wellness journey would lead me to CBD um, because I've been working for decades to help people break free from addiction, mostly helping people with weight loss and smoking cessation, but all kinds of addictions. And I myself have, have uh, would consider myself to have a very sort of addictive tendency where, I mean, I even had to, I cut out sugar 30 years ago, you know, because I was so um, sensitive to substances. Uh, but what happened for me was that, unfortunately, about mm, probably a little more than 10 years ago, but I was, I was, um, I was diagnosed with glaucoma. And so that is a very serious disease of the eye where you can lose a lot of vision quite rapidly. And it actually creates the, the parts of the optic nerve die and they cannot, according to Western medicine, be regenerated. So I, you know, it's very serious. And I had already lost quite a bit of vision by the time it was discovered, the time I discovered it. So mm. um, I was seeing an ophthalmologist and trying to control it with just drops, trying to eye drops and trying to avoid surgeries. And um, the ophthalmologist was, you know, sort of shaking his head saying things are getting worse, much worse. This was about three, four years ago. And he was suggesting surgeries, more medications, really invasive uh, therapies, which I wanted to avoid. My husband at the time, it was, it was nothing like it is today, sort of the rage. Nobody had heard of CBD. My husband suggested it. And I was very leery about it because I didn't understand. I thought, well, the, you know, the cannabis plant, I don't want to start getting high. And I, you know, I've overcome all that. You know, it's, <laughs> I didn't want to go backwards. And then I started researching and discovering that no, CBD does not make you high. It actually contains the medicinal portion of the plant, um, the, the, the hemp plant. And the more I discovered about it, the more excited I got, but mostly I got excited when I tried it. You know, it's one thing to read about it. My eye pressures went way down, which was great. My ophthalmologist was thrilled. My glaucoma was now under control. I did not need surgery or more medication. But for me, what excited me the most were the side benefits. I was sleeping better. I felt my hormones had leveled out. Uh, when I, I don't, I'm not, I'm, 
fortunately not in pain, frequently physical pain, but when I did have physical pain, I noticed immediately uh, that it real that I didn't need pain medicines, that it was helping me with that. So I wanted to share this with my following, with other people. But unfortunately, the more I discovered about CBD, even back then, three, four years ago, the way it was being marketed, there was so much deception and confusion. People didn't understand that there were different, you know, that all CBD is not equal. What's the difference between CBD and hemp? There's so many questions. And that's when I decided uh, to create a brand of really high quality CBD so that people would get the real thing when they needed it the most because people are suffering so much with pain, anxiety, sleep issues, and this is where CBD could help. And then most recently, I wrote my book really just to educate people on how, what to look for, whether you're buying it online, at a dispensary, anywhere, what are the things to look for to make sure you're getting high quality? CBD. Yeah, I love the book. So it's CBD for health and wellness questions you should be asking. And uh, here are some of the questions that we will go go uh, over in the in this program today. But one of the misconceptions and uh, and uh, happens to me too, I used to think the same thing is the difference between CBD and medical marijuana. Yes. Now, um, it uh, CBD does not have THC. So it doesn't have this, uh, you don't get the buzz. And some people might be turned off that way, but it's, it's again, <laughs> important to, this is not the same as decaffeinated coffee or anything or non-alcoholic wine or things I would not uh, consume. But um, the idea is here, yes, we want to get to the benefits of yeah. the um, compound itself. And what are some of the benefits? What would you say? And what can it be used for as well? You mentioned a few things already, but um, what are some other benefits that we can gain from CBD? Well, in the book, I have a lot of sources. It's amazing how many scientific studies have been done on the cannabis plant, on CBD specifically, as you said, not medical marijuana, but just specifically CBD. And the number one thing CBD is most beneficial for is reducing inflammation. And if we you know, read about inflammation, it's at the root cause of so many ailments. Absolutely. And, I, I call it the root of many evils. Yes, <laughs> inflammation yes, itself. yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, eating sugar increases inflammation and sugars in everything. It's very difficult to actually even avoid it, even when you become aware of the, of the uh, dangers of it. So the wonderful thing about CBD is it can help to counteract that because it reduces inflammation. So inflammation is the culprit, as you said, for so many things, but specifically pain issues. And that's why CBD can help so much with all kinds of pain, you know, whether it's nerve pain, uh, back pain, shoulder pain, any kind of joints, knees, hips, uh, but even headaches, fibromyalgia. So it's been really a godsend for so many people. I get emails all the time for, you know, because of uh, people who are using the CBD and they're letting me know, especially the high quality CBD. And uh, one woman, I, I love her story. She told me that for menopause, she said she had so many menopausal symptoms and actually her husband reaches out to me and he just can't thank me enough because he said there was nothing that would help her, but the high quality CBD also blended with other herbs that are beneficial for balancing hormones and balancing the body. Uh, but that's one example. Sleep is another one. And so many people suffer with sleep and they're you know now addicted to sleep medications. And uh, CBD can be so beneficial to help people fall asleep, stay asleep and anxiety. You know, um, PTSD is such a, especially now, I mean, stress is so, so uh, prevalent in our society and our culture for most of us both individually and collectively. And CBD can really help take the edge off, can help to feel more relaxed. Mm -hmm. does, it, does it kind of calm the nervous system? How, how does it do it? What would be the, the effect there? Because stress is huge and stress is a driver of inflammation as well. They go hand in hand. So how yeah. can we deal with that stress and anxiety? And what happens in our body, basically? You, you mentioned the bliss molecule. And I found that fascinating. So even if you're not suffering from, from any ailments and diseases, we do want happiness. And so if, if that can be increased in any natural way that doesn't have yes. negative consequences, why not? So yes. let's talk a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the mechanism is incredible. Only in the late 1980s, early 1990s, scientists discovered that our human body and also animals have it too. So all mammals have 
what's known as an endocannabinoid system. And this system has receptor cells literally from head to toe. So sometimes people may wonder, well, how can CBD help with so many things? Well, literally CBD affects how we eat, how we sleep, how we think because of these receptor cells. Now the body, the miracle of the body is that it produces its own endocannabinoids, endo meaning from within and the cannabinoids. And this is what activates this endocannabinoid system. So we can think of the cells, the receptor cells as like tiny locks um, that sit on top of the cells of all of the entire endocannabinoid system. And then the endocannabinoids or the phytocannabinoids, which CBD is a plant cannabinoid, and that actually activates, it's like, turning the locks. So these are the keys that activate the locks that are on the, the cells. And so because it's throughout the body, it's affecting the entire body. And one of these endocannabinoids that the body naturally produces is, as you said, the bliss molecule, anandamide. And I write a lot about, about it a lot in the book. I talk about that. So the anandamide gives us that feeling of happiness, of bliss, of calm and peace. But what happens is the body also has an enzyme called the FAAH enzyme, a little technical. But what that does, it's actually like a little Pac-Man. It gobbles up. I'm dating myself with the Pac-Man concept. But it, I love it. It, gobb That's great. <laughs> it gobbles up, you know, that anandamide. And so what the CBD can do, what the research is saying, is that it actually prevents the degradation of the anandamide molecule. So we have more of that bliss molecule in the body. And what that can do is preventing cancer in many ways, because you are repairing, your body repairs itself or has the opportunity to, to repair itself much better than when you are stressed and anxious and in, in that negative state of mind. And you mentioned the entourage uh, effect. Uh, what would that be? Yeah. What does that mean? Right. So the entourage effect is, so we're talking about CBD and mm -hmm. the different types of CBD. So the types, there is full spectrum, broad spectrum, and isolate, those are the three main types of CBD. So the full spectrum CBD, you were saying earlier, you know, we don't, a lot of us don't wanna get high, you know, we're not interested in that. And for those of you, know, you who are, it's no problem, but that's something different. However, full spectrum C, uh, CBD does have less than 0.3% THC. So not enough to get you high, but just enough to activate the CBD. You mentioned the entourage effect. What that means is the benefit of the whole plant. So Dr. Ethan Russo, Russo talked a lot about that, how we want to have the benefit of the whole plant and the, whole, and the benefit of the whole plant is much, much greater uh, than even the sum of its parts. So, you know, when you just take, for example, an isolate, and there's so much CBD out there that people wouldn't even realize because they don't even realize to look for it on the label. It's just isolate. It's just a chemical isolated part of the plant. And that is not going to have the same medicinal value as a full spectrum CBD, which allows for what you're talking about, the entourage effect that affects the whole body. Um, but yeah, you mentioned stress and, and you talk about cancer, but it, it really it's anything. I mean, stress is the precursor for almost every illness and disease. And we already know that. So it's wonderful to find a plant compound that can help us to relax. Yeah. And blood pressure too. That was the, the main driver of my own blood pressure and just dealing with the stress has really calmed it down. And other things like I was suffering from sleep apnea and which uh, after dealing with the stress, um, it's gone away and I can, I can sleep and uh, I, I don't have that shortness of breath. So it's, it's really interconnected. Our body is really a holistic um, yeah. thing that works together and every parts affect uh, the other parts as well. But the main thing is, again, or very important is, is our mental health and making yes. sure that is fine. And that goes hand in hand again with the physical health as well. Um, exactly. Now, and migraines, I think that is uh, a huge important too, something that I used to suffer uh, mm. from as well. But we do see, and I found out the cause was really the amount of stress I was feeling. And yeah, so it, can think, be, mm. it can be. I had, I had some this amazing um, experience where First for Women magazine did a full page story on actually one of my customers, Cindy Diskin, who reached out to me with her story. And she was suffering from migraines. I mean, stress may have been a part of it, but actually she fell off her bicycle without wearing a helmet, poor thing, and she had a horrible concussion. And the headaches were unbearable. It went on for months and months. 
And she applied the Renus Organic 1000 milligram CBD pain relief cream right here, just to her temples where the um, headaches were, were the, really originating. And she could not believe that they alleviated the pain. So it's incredible. You know, plant medicine is really amazing uh, when we're able to really tap into it as a resource. Now, there's a difference between synthetic and organic CBD. Yeah. And so a, a lot of CBD that is available, whether through Amazon or other places, is not necessarily the one we want. So what do we look out for? What can we do? You know, that is so tricky, Arash, because it's not always on the label. We may not even know that isolate is synthetic. And some of the labs that are, you know, because we always hear, of course, you want your CBD to be third-party tested. That is so important. You want to really see that what the label claims, how much CBD is in that uh, bottle, you want to make sure that a third-party laboratory that is ISO accredited, so it's got to be an accredited laboratory, is verifying that what's claimed on the label is actually true, what's in the bottle. But even there, some labs are seeing that they're looking at an isolate and finding and discovering that it actually is synthetic and it's not even on the label. So a consumer wouldn't know. And the FDA has issued warnings for consumers to say, hey, buyer beware, be careful because that synthetic CBD can cause all kinds of health problems. Um, but in general, and you mentioned Amazon, which is so important for consumers to know. I have a store on Amazon, so I really know firsthand my products, my CBD products are not in my Amazon store because Amazon makes it illegal. It, they, you have to actually um, or check their terms and, and agreements. And actually you have to claim that there is no CBD or no cannabinoids in your bottles of what you're selling. And it's a shame. That makes because, no like, sense. <laughs> no, it makes no sense because mm. CBD is not legal on Amazon. I mean, it's silly right now and hopefully the laws will change, but it's just the way it is. So, but when you search CBD on Amazon, a lot of products are gonna come up. And unless a product has slipped through the Amazon review board, you'll see that it doesn't say CBD, it all says hemp. The problem there is it can be very tricky because all CBD is indeed hemp, but all hemp is not CBD. Hemp could just be plain cheap hemp seed oil, you know, like olive oil or grapeseed oil. So it's not bad for you. Um, for example, a lot of my CBD products are in hemp seed oil, but that's not where the medicinal value comes. The medicinal value is in the CBD. So, you know, even if someone might think, oh my gosh, this CBD is only $19.99, which is a lot better than let's say, you know, what, what some CBD might be priced. But when you think it could just be a one ounce bottle of oil, nothing else, then of course you realize, wow, that's not a good deal at all. But the information is uh, the label is there or what, what, how can we know? I mean, you do have a website yourself, uh, reynasorganic.com. So that would be the, the pure organic one that, uh, yes. that you're selling. But US how can we know your... as well? How can we verify that yeah. it is organic? It's a great question. And it's really important uh, to do more research. Mm -hmm. You know, with the Amazon, it's not even just CBD. You know, it depends what you're buying. Obviously, if you're buying like on, on Amazon, you know, scotch tape or paper clips, there's no problem, you know, but I mean, with certain products, there is uh, some deception that can go on and products may not be labeled correctly. And I think Amazon tries to really crack down, but, and actually as a vendor on Amazon, a lot of times they'll send me emails saying, you know, be careful of the fraud that people may be, you know, copycatting your products or mis- uh, misrepresenting. So it's up to manufacturers to really get the information out there. It should be, you, I really encourage consumers to go to the manufacturer's website and find out where is this leaf, uh, CBD grown and cultivated. One of the things that we want to understand about the hemp plant is that it is so porous. And in fact, there was a big nuclear spill in the 1980s in Chernobyl, and they actually used hemp for phytoremediation, meaning that they would plant the hemp plants there because it would literally absorb the metals and the toxins out of the ground, which was fabulous so that now the ground could be uh, used for habitat and agriculture. But understanding then, my goodness, how porous that hemp plant is, imagine if it's grown in a field where there are pesticides or toxins, not certified organic. So we want to make sure that not only is the CBD um, or the hemp plant itself, the hemp grown in the United States, we want to make sure the seeds have come from the United States, because if they've come from overseas, even if they've come from Europe, we don't really know where they've originated from 
whether they were cultivated in an organic, pristine environment. Now, there are different ways of consuming it. And so I, obviously, I would think vaping would not be the best choice here. But you have vaping, you have gummies, you have oil, and so on. So what would be um, your recommendation for each of them? Yeah, I highly I understand, you know, it's so tempting the vaping and there have been so many warnings issued uh, regarding vaping. But aside from that, aside from the potential danger to the lungs, the other thing is to realize that with vaping and with gummies, it's you're not just consuming pure CBD. There's flavors involved, there's chemicals, because it's all about taste. And I realize a lot of people, you know, want a good taste, but it's important to realize that there are downsides to consuming these chemicals and these flavors. And now it's sort of tainting. Here you're taking the CBD for medicinal purposes. Who knows what you're putting into your body? So I highly recommend the clean oils where all, the only thing in the oil would be either MCT oil, medium chain triglyceride oil, with the omega-3s or hemp seed oil, and then pure CBD. And the potency should be clearly on the label, whether it's 300 milligram, 600 milligram, 1500 milligram. And if there is any flavor, you want to know that it's a pure essential oil, an organic essential oil. And that should then again be on the label. But it's very important, as I said, you want to see on the label that the CBD is grown in the USA. And I would also say, I would add to that Colorado, because Colorado is the perfect climate for growing the CBD. Plus, because of the, uh, the government is very, um, they encourage the, 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 the hemp growing there. And so they have very strict organic farming regulations that are in place where other states, maybe not so much. And in other states, unfortunately, I'm in Florida, Florida, unfortunately, also Oregon, very damp. And the hemp plant is prone to mold. And sometimes your end product, even if you look at the third party test, there might be no mold on the product. But then if you want your manufacturer, like on my website, I actually even have the COA certificate of analysis of the hemp plant itself, where the CBD was derived from. And you want to make sure there was absolutely never any mold in that product. It's kind of like a fine wine. You have like specific yeah. area that is conducive to it and produces a better quality. That's fascinating. Yes. That's very yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. So what are some side effects? So because everything usually has certain side effects. So yeah. what would be side effects of CBD? I think the worst case for CBD, you know, it, it helps with sleep, but the flip, flip side could be that you get too tired. And so I always recommend to people starting out with CBD, start slow, even, uh, you know, even if you're going to go to one of the higher dosages, like let's say 1500 milligrams, start with just a couple drops, let your body get used to it. And the wonderful thing about CBD is that you can sort of play with it and you can always cut back if you, mm -hmm. if you need to. Um, that would be the main thing. And then for some people, you know, they might have that, you know, it, because the endocannabinoid system helps with the whole body. For a lot of people, it can be very helpful for digestion. Um, but some people, again, if you start with too much, it might create um, a frequent bowel movement. So you, there again, the solution, it just cut back. The other thing as, that I write about in my book is that people say, well, can it interact with my medicine? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it can. Because uh, for some medicines, they are using the same, the body uses the same enzyme uh, to break down that medication, the pharmaceutical, uh, medication as it, it's using to break down the CBD, but that can actually be a benefit. I actually have a case study in my book where um, the physician was giving the uh, the patient medication to, to assist with the medical condition, and the patient started taking CBD, and so then the patient was then able to start taking less of the pharmaceutical medication, which was wonderful because that medication had all kinds of horrible side effects. So, you know, work with your doctor to see, you know, so you can, but that could be one of the greatest benefits is that you might actually get to, with your doctor's permission, reduce some of the ph pharmaceutical medication. In your book, you mentioned it's kind of like grapefruit, which interferes yeah. with everything. And it seems so harmless, but still it does uh, cause disruptions with your medication. But I think, yes, so you would say consult uh, your doctor just to make sure about dosage and uh, um, how it might interact with other medication. Would, would that be the Ex recommendation? Exactly, yeah. And, and you know, there are, there are studies like even where doctors will say, they'll tell their patients, okay, take your CBD, let's say in the morning, if you take your medication in the evening, and that could solve the problem. So there's all kinds of, of workarounds. 
Are um, doctors generally open to uh, encouraging you or promoting you, or do you find they're hesitant? My experience was a lot of doctors are a bit on the hesitant side. They would not, yeah. any, whether it's a CBD or medical marijuana, they try to stay away from it. Well, unfortunately, you know, a lot of doctors don't know about it. So unless they take it upon themselves to educate themselves, uh, they weren't taught about it in medical school. That's for sure. And, you know, doctors that are old school, they've been doing the same thing for years and years. So they might feel like, why muddy the water? But with more and more people really demanding uh, from their physicians to, you know, really saying, look, I want to take a more holistic route. You know, I, I, I'm not saying, I mean, we need both, you know, Western medicine, we know can save our life. I mean, I've had a pacemaker since I was 26. So my gosh, we all know the value of Western medicine when we need it. But at the same time, often it can be very harmful if we end up relying on, you know, we're taking too many pharmaceuticals. So it, you know, studies it's, show it. it's it scary how we embrace pharmaceuticals and we don't question them enough. And it seems like perfectly fine, whereas it does have a lot of negative side effects that, that go with them. And the, the idea of addiction to a lot of these pharma, uh, pharmaceuticals are addictive. And uh, I think there's not enough uh, people talking about it or, or aware of it. So yeah. I think we need to, to keep that in mind. And again, what you're doing is get, we're giving information about this and how um, CBD is different from medical marijuana, that it's not uh, addictive. It doesn't have that component in it. Uh, that is very important. And I it think also one of, the, one of the dangers is with, with uh, gummies that it's, it could be appealing for kids. So when it's marijuana, it will have a negative effects on them. But what, if, what about younger uh, um, people? Would they benefit from CBD? I know there are, there's some use of it in, in, in medical practice. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously it needs to be, if a child's under 18, then the parent has to. Um, but many, many parents, you know, are, they're searching for help for their children and uh, CBD has been very very beneficial for many young people it's been and, used and, against seizure as anti-seizure oh for, yeah um, with epilepsy epi and, yeah, yeah epilepsy yeah but also and also a lot of kids are suffering with anxiety yes. and it can be helpful. So yeah, a lot of parents are seeking and, and finding- And that's the choice. You have the pharmaceuticals or CBD. I would give CBD a, a chance and uh, hopefully it will resolve the issues as well. Yes, exactly. There's no harm in it. Like you said, there's I mean- no harm in it. Yeah. No, there's not been one reported uh, death or toxicity from CBD, which is you know, pretty amazing when you think of the damage that can be done, but we know can be done from pharmaceuticals. I mean, look at the opioid crisis and how many deaths there have been. And it's so tempting when you're in physical pain. I mean, it's so hard. And I've just been so blessed with having CBD in my life now. I thank God, like I said, I'm not a person who's been in a lot of physical pain, but when it happens, like I've thrown my back out a few times, about three, four times over the years since I started with the CBD. And it is just a godsend to be able to put that thousand milligram cream on and then taking the CBD, you ask what's the best way to take it sublingually under the tongue, the oil, kind of swish it around. It's not going to taste great. So after that, you could, you know, swish with a peppermint oil or whatever, but uh, it's amazing how it can really take the edge off and help with pain. We're not, when nothing else can. Mm -hmm. You're also very interested in, in nutrition. And so you talked about sugar and so on. So what would be some advice here just to complement your our, our wellness issue of uh, including uh, in, in nutrition? What should we watch out for? What do you recommend? How can we help our body get rid of toxins and inflammation by using nutrition specifically? What would you say? Yeah, that's so important. Well, you know, of course, is what we should eat. We know, obviously, eating more plant uh, based uh, foods. So obviously vegetables, you know, um, even, but you know, every body is different. And what I find the most important thing that, because I've worked with thousands of people over the, of, over the years to help them to lose weight. And I've really not focused so much on telling people what to eat, but instead helping them change their thinking because look, most people who struggle with their weight and with their health, they know exactly what they should and shouldn't be eating. A lot of them could even write, you know, a diet book. The issue is how do you get motivated to stick to a sensible eating plan? So we all know, obviously the less processed the food is, the better it is. That's what we really, really want to eat. Unprocessed, whole, real, clean uh, foods, 
that are come right from the earth with as li- as few uh, steps in between they're being grown from the earth and on the supermarket shelf. Uh, but for most people, the problem is really addiction to the sugary foods, the processed foods, the junky foods. And the only way that I find to combat that is to actually change your thinking, to rewire your brain so that you can start to associate pleasure with the healthy, nutritious foods and be turned off to those harmful foods. So it's a form of hypnosis that I teach people and it works. It's really just shifting that mindset so that you can actually prefer a delicious salad rather than, you know, reaching for that pizza or donut or something. I completely agree with you. And so a lot of eating is is emotional, I, I found out mm-hmm. too. And so um, because it makes it soothes us, it makes us feel good. And we go for the uh, high fat and high sugary foods. Um, but the good thing is once you realize it, and I also used intermittent fasting, which helped me with control, with controlling eating habits and hunger then you wean yourself off of it. And it does not seem as appealing. And for me, it's I still have it occasionally, but it's not something that I derive specific pleasure out of. It's yes, occasional wonderful. and I'm in control. And I think that's important. So realizing yes. the source of it, the emotional uh, content mindset, as you're saying, as well as finding a way of um, controlling your body, which uh, intermittent fasting was was very helpful for me. That's wonderful. Yeah, that works for a lot of people. Um, For some people, just eating small meals more regularly. So every body is different. Uh, For myself, I had to cut sugar out completely. But a lot of my clients, like I've had people lose over 100 pounds using my program. And they still, you know, I had, um, you know, one woman, Susan, she said to me, well, you know, if I'm at a party, I want a piece of cake, I'll have a little slice. But usually I don't even want it. But she didn't feel like she had to deprive herself. And, you know, she mm, made yeah, it. Don't over. usually depriving yeah. yourself is not a good idea. Portions. I think that's great. Yeah. Portions and listening to your body. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is you really want to alkalize and cleanse, you know, your body. So, you know, so certain herbs can really be helpful. Um, apples, organic apple cider vinegar, lemons, limes, you know, those kind of alkalizing uh, foods can help cut the physical cravings. For those harmful foods. Wonderful. So um, the the book is CBD for health and wellness questions you should be asking and it's available for free. Right now for a limited time I'm offering it free on my website renasorganic.com so Mm -hmm. renasorganic.com and I want to get the information out there so yeah you can just go to the site and just download the book free um, it is over 100 pages, and there are so many you know, images of labels and certificates of analysis. How do you read the label? You know, I, I'm really showing the consumer what to look for, and I give examples of labels of, of well, you know, it's grayed out, but pro- brands that are out there and showing what's, you know, what makes sense and what you want to look for. And the same with certificate of analysis. Everybody's saying, yeah, we have the, the third-party testing on our website, but what do you look for? What does it mean? So the book really shows you know, how to buy CBD that's going to make the difference for you. Thank you so much, Rena Greenberg. You clarified a lot of doubts I had, questions I had, and more. So Very thank easy. you so much for, for being here and sharing your, your wisdom. And um, best of luck to you. All the very best. Thank you, Arash. You as well. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.